Hello ROS developers, Marco Arruda here and this is another video where we're gonna see how you can work with many workspaces of ROS in a single environment. So before anything else don't forget to subscribe to our channel, li like this video and leave a comment if you like this kind of content so we can know that we should keep creating this kind of content or if we must change the subjects of the videos, okay? It's very important for us. And also don't forget to check the Robot Ignite Academy where you can find practical online ROS courses and you can do everything just using a web browser. You don't have to install or configure anything else in your computer. Okay, so let's go to the video. As usual, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use ROS DS. If you don't have an account yet, just follow the link at the description, create your account for free and you start using, you have a free tire of eight hours per day to use ROS DS. So for the purpose of this video, I'm gonna use this overlaying workspaces in ROS. It's a blank project that I've just created. So let's open it. I'm gonna select the basic kind of computer, which is enough for this demonstration. And you have, like me, uh, three hours to use it. So let's open it. And you must wait a few seconds until the computer is ready. Okay, there it is. So we're not gonna use the notebook for this demonstration, so you can just close it, open a shell, and the ID. In ROSDS, you're gonna have uh, some workspaces already created because this is the way we propose for you to organize your ROS environment. But of course you can customize it as a ROS developer, you must know what is happening here. So it's very important to notice that you have only two ROS workspaces. They are CATKIN workspace and simulation workspace. They are overlaying each other and I'm gonna show how. But for instance, it's important to remember that the other folders here, AI workspace, datasets workspace, notebooks workspace and web page workspace were created for other purposes than creating ROS packages. So they are not ROS workspaces. They are just workspaces to work with Jupyter, web pages, or data sets, or AI, okay? So let's go to the terminal. And for the first demonstration, I'm gonna source the CATKIN workspace file, as usual. Then just after that, I'm gonna do a echo ROS package path. And there it is. I have, in my package path, I have CATKIN workspace, simulation workspace, and they are both in my project files. After them, we have the home simulations public simulation workspace. This public simulation workspace is something provided off the shells by ROSDS. So you don't have them in other environments than ROSDS because they were created to provide the free simulations that we have here. If you open the simulation menu, you're gonna see that there are many, many robots and worlds already available for you to work with ROS, and they are all contained inside this public simulation workspace. So if you want to have a public simulation of ROSDS, you must overlay this workspace first, okay? And actually this is something already done in our environment, but you can disable it, just stop overlaying it, okay? And at the end, you have, as in any other environment with ROS, the installation folder of ROS, which is on OPT ROS. In this case, we are working with the kinetic distro and the share folder, okay? So, what do we have here basically? We have four workspaces in Ro of ROS overlaying each other, and the first one is CATKIN workspace, followed by the simulation workspace, which are contained in our ROJEC files. Uh, in this case, how can we configure this? Basically, there is a very simple rule in ROS that makes the workspaces to overlay each other. And the first thing it, that it's important to know is, so take notes, if you have packages with the same name in different workspaces, for example, if I have a package called my package in CATKIN workspace and my package inside simulation workspace, 
the workspace that comes first in the package path is going to be used. Okay. Of course, it's not a good practice to have packages with the same name, even if they are in different workspaces. But if you need to do so, it's important to know how it's going to work. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to create a new workspace right now. And let's see how it goes because we already have many workspaces here. Let's see how it's going to handle a new one. So I'm going to create a folder and I'm going to call it my workspace underscore 01. I'm going to enter the folder and initialize a new workspace here. Okay. So now we have a new workspace in ROS. We need to run the get make command. It may take a few seconds, so let's wait for it. In the meantime, you can have another shell here because we're going to use for another demonstration. Okay, so there it is. Now we have another workspace. I'm gonna source this setup file. And let's check the ROS package path. What happened there? So basically ROS just put the new workspace over the over the previous one that we have as the primary one, let's call it, which was Catkin workspace, and then we have all the three workspaces following. So simulation workspace, the public one and the ROS installation folder. Okay, so this is how it works. Now let's say that you, you want to separate the, the new workspace from Catkin workspace because you may want just to ignore the packages that we have there, maybe something is broken or you just don't want to load everything that we have there. So how can you change this? So it's, it's a bit tricky at this point because even though you have the ROS package path variable here, you cannot just do an export ROS package path and write a new folder and you're going to have this, this work to write everything again. And actually, even if you do this, it's not going to work properly because all the files generated by the cat can make, which are inside the build and devil folders, they are kind of carrying the the overlay rules that you have loaded before. Okay, so if you want to just ignore, let's say you want to ignore the Catkin workspace and the public work and the simulation workspace that we have here, this is how you have to do this. So you have to remove the build and devil folders. Okay, just keep the source folder. Then you have to source the workspace that you want to overlay directly. So Let's say you want to skip Catkin workspace and simulation workspace, and then we want only to consider my workspace 01, then the public simulation workspace and ROS installation folder. So this is how you have to do it. Copy the workspace that you want to overlay directly. Then you have to source it. So let's source. Okay. Uh, I have a problem here to paste the command. So I have to source home simulations, public sim workspace, the devil setup file. Now you can check your ROS package path has just changed. So you have only simulations and installation folder of ROS here. Now that you have this new ROS package path, you can compile your new workspace again, which is going to generate a new rule of overlaying workspaces in your ROS package path. So let's see how it goes. Okay, so I'm going to source my new workspace that is just compiled, then echo the ROS package path again. There it is. Now we have only my new workspace, which is my workspace 01, and it's really 
overlaying directly the public simulation workspace and finally the installation folder of ROS. So there it is. And if you go to the second web shell, I'm, I'm going to source the Catkin workspace. So is it going to be changed because I have done this for my new workspace? Of course not, because ROS can make the workspaces, each one with a different overlaying rule. Okay. So in this case, we can have Catkin workspace is still overlaying the simulation workspace then the public simulation workspace, okay? So this is how it goes. Let's show in a diagram how it works. So basically we have the installation folder here, OPT ROS distro. Just over it we have the public simulation workspace which is provided by the construct. Then over it we have the simulation workspace, which is provided in your own project files. This one, simulation workspace. I'm going to collapse get workspace. And over it, finally, we have get in workspace. Okay. So I'm going to put a, 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 an arrow here showing who is overlaying. And finally, how is this new workspace uh, related to the others in this diagram? Basically, we can say that it's in parallel to the other workspace. It's like this. So, if you source my workspace 01, you are considering only the packages that are in this workspace, the public simulation workspace, and ROS distro, the installation folder. Okay? Now, if you source Catkin workspace, you're going to have the packages in these four workspaces, but not the packages that, is, that are inside this one. Okay, so this is a rule created in ROS to make it uh, in a way that if you have more than one workspace, they, are, they must be in a row of priority. Okay, so if you source one of them, and if you want to work with another one, they must be in a row of priority. Then ROS knows uh, where to look for a package first, and then second, and finally to the other packages until it reaches all the workspaces you have there. So again, you, if you want to create a new workspace, for example, I'm going to create a third one here, a second one here. So let's call it my workspace number two, source folder. I'm going to initialize a new workspace. Now, for example, if I want to make this workspace to overlay the first workspace, like this, just before compiling this workspace, I need to source the one that I want to be just below this, the new one. Okay, So this is how you have to do it. Uh, check your ROS package path before and it's considering the Catkin workspace. If I compile my new workspace right now, I'm gonna have my workspace 02 just above the Catkin workspace, which is not what I want right now because I want to have it here instead, okay? Not in this place. Let's say this is the wrong place for my new workspace, but I have to have it here, okay? So what I have to do is to change my ROS package path, the environment variable. So I have to source my workspace 01, that will set up folder, then check my ROS package path variable, there it is, and finally I can compile my workspace. It's gonna take a few seconds again. There it is. Now if I source the new setup file generated by the compilation and check my ROS package path again, we're going to have my workspace 02 followed by my workspace 01 
followed by the public simulation folder right here and the installation folder of ROS. Of course, installation folder must be always at the bottom of this chain, let's call it, in order to have the basis of ROS and then you can have the workspaces with the packages that you want to work with, okay? And also it's, in, it's important to notice that ROSDS is prepared to work with the public simulation workspace. So if you want to make the most of ROSDS and work with the simulations that we have available here, you must always have the public simulation workspace in the chain of your workspaces, okay? So, for example, if you just remove the public simulation workspace of the ROS package path, you can't, you can't launch a public simulation here. So, for example, uh, every time they want to launch a simulation here, let's do an example. So, I want to launch TurtleBot 2 in the empty world. Let's start the simulation. Wait for the Zero server. It's gonna work, okay? Uh, and also it's important to notice that ROSDS is always, just before launching a simulation, it's always sourcing the CatKin workspace. So even if you have a workspace above CatKin workspace, it's going to be ignored by ROSDS simulation. Mainly because the simulation launcher is sourcing CatKin workspace, which is overlaying your simulations and the public simulation workspace, okay? So it's important to have this in mind. This is where ROSDS is going to launch the public simulations. So let's put a circle here. And this is where we start from in order to launch a simulation. Okay, so let's put it like this. And this is the simulation launcher menu. Okay, so for example, if I just close the simulation, it's going to, to kill the process. And then I come here to CatKin workspace. I'm going to source its setup file and check the ROS package path. So as you can see, we still have the original path of the CatKin workspace. Even though we have created two other new workspaces and changed the overlaying chain of them. So at this time I can remove it. So even though we have these two new workspaces, they are not inter interfering in the ROS package path of CatKin workspace because I haven't recompiled the CatKin workspace. Now, if I just source the user, uh, my new workspace, actually, if I just source the ROS installation folder, you're gonna have this package path here. So, at this point, you have only the ROS installation folder included. Now, if I compile the CatKin workspace, okay, make, which is at this point, it's empty, so it may take just a few seconds to get, get ready. There it is. Now, let's source the new setup file. Actually, I, I shouldn't have removed the, the folder, so build and devil. Now I can recompile. And all these files are going to be generated again. Now if I source it and check my ROS package path, I'm gonna have home user catkin workspace and the kinetic distribution folder. So what do we have here? Basically, CatKin workspace was moved from here to here. So it's overlaying directly the installation folders of ROS, okay? So it means that we don't have this, the public simulations anymore available. So if I try to launch another simulation here that we have configured in the public simulation, for example, ROSBot, let's try to launch it. Remember, because the simulation launcher menu is sourcing CatKin workspace before any simulation. 
So right now what is happening is this. Then we're gonna have a problem here. So as you can see the start world launch file, which is related to the empty world that we have chosen, is inside the package called it Gertie Description. Okay? And also the put robot in world for the Rosbot Gazebo package is also included in the public simulation workspace. So for this reason, we don't have the simulation available anymore because the catching workspace is not overlaying anymore the public simulation workspace. Okay? So right now we have a broken catching workspace in the point of view of RSDS because if you want to configure the, your project like this, it's okay, it's fine, totally fine, since you are aware of what you are doing. So if you want to make it work again with the public simulations, I have to recompile my folder, my, my workspace. So you have to remove the build and devil folders, then you have to source the package, the, the workspace that you want to overlay. So for example, if I want to overlay only the public simulation workspace, it means that I don't want to consider the simulation workspace that I have here in my project, which is right here. So for instance, it's empty, so I don't have to overlay it, okay? So I'm gonna source the home simulations, public simulation workspace, that was a top file. And at this moment, I want, I'm gonna recompile my Catkin workspace. Still have the broken simulation here. We can just close it and the simulation process is going to be killed. In the meantime, our Catkin workspace is almost ready. So basically, what we had before was a package path considering only the, the public simulation workspace and kinetic. So I'm gonna source Catkin workspace again. And now we have Catkin workspace back again. Then we have the public simulation workspace and ROS installation folder as we have in the diagram. So getting workspace, public simulation and the distribution of ROS. Okay? So if I try to relaunch the same simulation which I told you that was available in the public simulation workspace, we can also put in a different color here because uh, let's say they are mandatory in order to use ROSDS menu. Now we have the simulation working, okay? So as you can see, we don't have any error messages in the logs of the simulation window. And at this point, we have the robot being inserted by ROSDS. So yeah, there it is. Basically, uh, this is how you can work with multiple workspaces in ROS. And this is how you can change the overlaying rules that you have there. So. As a matter of demonstration, we can try again to, for example, to choose one of the workspaces that we created before, which was my workspace 02 and my workspace 01, for example. And we're gonna have the same behavior as before. So if you source one of them, you're gonna have only the workspaces they will have below, following the arrow. These are the workspaces we're gonna have available here, okay? So yeah, basically that's it. That's the content for the video. You can also find at the description of the video a link to a blog post where you're gonna see the very same instructions and very detailed tutorial in order to understand this overlaying workspace thing of ROS and make yourself uh, aware of this kind of behavior inside ROS. Okay, so don't forget if you like this kind of video, please leave a like, leave a comment and subscribe to our channel. Thank you, see you in the next video, bye!